In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate pension expense for a defined benefit pension plan. So I've put together an example, and this is going to be for the year 2017. So let's say we're putting together the income statement as of December 31st, 2017, and we've got the following data. And we're going to use the data here in order to create our pension expense amount, right? So we're going to need to know a number of things here, and they're going to be used to compute the five components of pension expense, which we talked about in our previous video. So service cost is typically just going to be calculated by an actuary and just given to the accountants. I'll have another video on how to compute it, but let me just give it to you right now. Let's say that for 2017, the service cost, which represents the benefits earned, the pension benefits earned from that additional year of work from the employees, that's $65,000. So we're just going to put $65,000 over here. Let me make sure we have plenty of space. There we go. So that's our service cost is $65,000, right? That's just given. Now, the interest cost is the second component of pension expense. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the beginning balance of the PBO, which is January 1st, 2017, right? So that's our beginning balance of the projected benefit obligation here, the PBO. That $200,000, we're going to multiply that by the interest rate. Remember, this has to be the same rate that was used to compute the service cost. We're not going to worry about that too much right now. But we're going to take the $200,000 and multiply it by 4%. And so that's going to give us $8,000 $8, in interest, okay? And that is going to increase, both of these are going to increase our pension expense. So right now we're at $73,000 in pension expense, but we still have three things to go. Okay, Now we're going to calculate the expected return, not the actual return, on our plan assets. Remember, the assets of the pension are invested somewhere in a stock market, in bonds, etc. So we take the beginning balance of the fair value of the plan assets. So basically, the assets we have to begin with, 180,000, and we multiply that by 10%, right? Because 10% is what managers for this firm have said is what they think will be the expected return, okay? So 10% times 180,000 is going to give us 18,000. Now, we're going to I'm going to put that, let me stick with white here. I'm going to put that in parentheses to indicate that we're subtracting it. We're subtracting it because when we have a return on our plan assets, right? If we're making money on the the assets we have invested, that's going to decrease, right? That's going to reduce our pension expense. It's offsetting it. So I'm going to put a little minus sign here, right? So expected return is actually decreasing our pension expense. Now, the amortized gains or losses, remember we talked about when we have a, such a difference between expected and actual return on plan assets, and it gets outside this thing called the corridor, remember we talked about how that if it gets beyond that corridor, we might have to amortize or recognize some of those gains or losses. But we're just going to assume in this example that there was no corridor amortization in 2017. We'll talk about that in a future video. So we'll just put zero here. Now, our fifth component we're going to have is prior service costs. Remember, that's if you amend the plan to grant or change any of the prior benefits. Or, or you said, for example, an employee had worked there 15 years, and you said, you know what, they're doing a good job. Let's, for purposes of calculating their pension, give them an additional three years and pretend like they've been here 18 years. So you give them extra benefit. So let's say that for this firm, let's say we say, well, 2017, they granted some prior service costs, and that is amortized over time, straight line, and let's say that that amortization comes out to $7,000. So then that is going to increase our pension expense. And so now we can come up with our total, our total pension expense here. I'm just going to add this up, pension expense. And so we're going to have 65 plus 8 is $73,000 minus the 18000 right? Because we have to subtract our expected return. And then we're going to add in the 7000 That's going to give us $62,000 in pension expense for 2017. 
And in the next video, I'll talk about how we'd go about making the journal entries to reflect this.